In this class, we are going to learn how to invoke or call REST APIs from process application with the help of REST connectors. Before going to hands-on, let's check what is Oracle documentation says about REST connectors and how we can configure the REST connectors. I am here in the official documentation page by Oracle on using processes in Oracle integration. From the table of content, we have to navigate to integration with applications and services. Under that, we are having a section called as create REST and web service connectors. By web service, they meant SOAP connectors or the SOAP web services. Our focus of interest for this class is working with REST API. So, we will concentrate on creating REST connectors. So, here is the documentation in brief and coming to connection to a REST service at high level, they have mentioned what and all details could be used in order to connect with the REST services from process application with the help of REST connector. Coming to creating a REST connector, here Oracle has documented in detail step by step how we can create or configure REST connector in process application. Anytime while practicing this class, if you are stuck, just come over to this documentation so that you can get the answer for your queries. Also, you can reach out to us by directly messaging us on this platform or by emailing us. Without wasting much time, let's begin with our hands-on. First of all, I will create one application as I don't have any application. Click on this create. Click on create application. I will name this as REST connector. This is the space where I am going to save this application. If you want to create any other space or add to any other existing space, then that you can provide over here. Once done, click on this create. Our process application has been created. We are not going to create any process for this class. We are straight away going to integrations. All those steps, whatever I am telling you in this hands-on is available in the documentation. Now, there are two ways how we can create REST connector. First method is clicking on this link to an integration. We can click on this and select the create a REST connector. And the method 2 is if you see over here on the right top corner, there is a create button. If you click on this, you will get an option called as external. From here, you are getting two options, create so and REST. We need to click on REST. So both the methods, it will launch the similar pop-up. For demonstration purpose, I am going to make use of JSON placeholder fake APIs. So, this is the documentation page for placeholder API. This is the fake API with which we can build our applications making use of those open APIs. Now, here if you see, this will return only one to-do list. But if we want to create the connector and populate some LOV, then we need to have the array. Now, we can create a couple of resources with this. Now, first is it will return only one with the help of this path parameter wherein we can pass the first to-do list or the ID of the first to-do from the list, then that will return us this details. If you want to get the array of to-do list, we can just copy this from here and paste in the browser. If we paste in the browser, we are getting this kind of response. That is the array, which starts with the square bracket. Now, we are going to make use of this API and create a REST connector. Now, let me copy this. This is nothing but the base URI for any REST API. I am going to name this as json placeholder connector as we are connecting to json placeholder api here we need to provide the base uri click on create similar steps you can follow in order to connect to fusion apis or any other apis from process application we are going to learn in our next classes how we can connect to fusion scm rest apis with the help of rest connector if you see over here there are two sections configuration and resources let me click on this edit configuration here if you see uh, whatever base URI we had provided while creating this REST connector is available over here. Apart from this, we can set the readout demo. This is in milliseconds. That is, it will wait to read the data from the host. This connection timeout, it is the timeout in milliseconds again while making the initial connection. If you want to reduce or increase, we can set accordingly. Coming to security, if your API is secured, then we can provide basic authentication over here. Currently, it supports basic, basic authentication only. We can create a new key. If you don't have any keys created, we will learn about in detail how the keys are maintained in this key store credentials in process applications. If you don't have any key, we can provide a key like if it is a SaaS user, then we can give something like this and we can provide the SaaS username and the password and click on apply. Now, our JSON placeholder API is not secured. I'm clicking on none. Coming to visibility, if you want to hide this from the basic palette from our application canvas, then we can toggle this like this. 
if you want to show only the connector if you want to show the resources if you want to show the operations then we can provide accordingly over here by toggling in the radio list i'm keeping this default i want to show this in a palette and i will just go to general and cancel as we don't had any changes it, this apply button is grayed out if we have made any changes then we will get this apply button enabled let me click on cancel now we need to define the operations what are the operations like this here we are getting the list of only one to do from the list but if we give slash to do's we are getting the array so these are the two resources which we can configure let me copy this to do's from here go over to the application click on add expand this here we can name this resource as get single to do item here in the resources or the base uri you can provide this to do's coming to add we have to select what kind of operation it is basically it is the http verb of the rest api this is of type get i am selecting get operation click on this here it will expand the configuration for the resource id or the resource path here we need to provide the template parameter in our case there is a template parameter we, where we can pass the id or the user id we can populate that here i will name this as id just tab out so that it will create id in the parameter so this at the runtime we can pass the details coming to the response here if you see we are having a response from this api if there is a request then we can follow the similar step what i am going to tell you shortly for a request as well i am going to tell you how we can configure the response body as this is get we are expecting a response from this api if it is a post if you are sending the request then you can define the body for that request payload as well as we don't have any body created we can create a body or the object in the business types then we can refer over here if you create business types it will list over here as we didn't create any business type objects it is not listing suppose if we didn't create any business objects we can create from here that is a plus button over here click on this here i am going to name this as get single to do item i am giving this as response here in the this area we need to paste the sample response from our api click on next click on import yeah done click on apply so that the changes will reflect we have created this resource that is to pull the single to do item from the list if you want to get more details like the array of to do from the list then what we can do is we can add one more operation over here get operation so here if we go we don't want to provide any path parameter over here if you see if we provide the path parameter like the id then we will get only details from one to do item if we don't provide this then we will get the array as you see over here this is the array what we get when we provide the path up to to do's here we are not defining anything in the resource path straight away we will go to response this time we are not selecting this response but we will create one more business object because our response will differ in this case from the single item response here let me name this as get all to do items here in the response let me copy and paste everything from here click on next click on import done click on apply now we are having two resources under this get operation for a particular api suppose if you are having multiple operations uh, created with the simple http where that is under get we are having so many operations then we have to provide details for all over here suppose if you are having some other path parameter like instead of to do's this api is having something called to then we can create one more resource under that we can provide the details for that particular path in our case both are having the same path then we have to mention operations with respect to those path over here in the single resource configuration so like this we can configure the rest connectors in process applications in our next class we will learn how we can make use of those rest connectors and populate the select control in the web form so that the user can select one of the values from the list